Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. And before we get started, please press the like button, please press the like button and subscribe as well as the notification bell so that when these videos do come up, um, you're notified and, um, you know, it's just a free way to really kind of support the channel. Um, and if you do like the content, it's a free way again to support the channel, gets the uh, YouTube algorithm going, right? So, um, our trading process is to apply fundamental and technical analysis, fundamental analysis to establish our directional bias and technical analysis, supply and demand strategies to really kind of time trade entries, risk management and establish some profit targets. So starting off with the week ahead and week ahead, um, all eyes are turning to the Federal Reserve's policy statement due on Wednesday, as well as the US jobs report on Friday, which will probably point to another month of employment gains, which is positive, right? Um, actually, let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, so worldwide PMI surveys will also be in the spotlight as well as monetary policy action by central banks in the UK. That's going to be another massive one. Um, Australia and that's pretty much those are the two that we you know we central banks that we do look at so UK and Australia Australia not so much really but of course it's going to be keenly watched for any um, any clues as to what they potentially may do with monetary policy the UK um, are looking to hike rates but let's see it's a bit of a complex one which we'll get into um, in a sec when we start to look at the in-depth technicals and fundamentals so uh, looking at the dollar index first of all and the DXY and uh, last week <clears throat> I was saying that the uh, the DXY um, is the path of least resistance is probably to the upside a bit more of a pullback and this is pretty much what happened prices came into the uh, you know this demand zone and pretty much shot up on the Friday and um, the uh, dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, or, or weakness against other currencies like the euro, the yen, and the pound. And um, again, the path of these resistance being really to the upside. Prices have been trending ever since the Federal Reserve pretty much came out back in June and said that they were looking to uh, to taper and potentially look to uh, hike rates uh, next year. Although that may not come to fruition as far as hiking rates, but uh, definitely tapering is 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 on the card so uh ing federal reserve preview job done right the fed officials agree that substantial further progress has been made on both the inflation and employment mandates with the qe program have its, having done its job and the covid uh, cases subsiding it is time to announce a slowing in the rate of asset purchases and that's positive because <clears throat> The central bank were buying pretty much government debt, right? Um, government assets and uh, supporting the economy. So now the um, they're reducing those asset purchases is a sign that the economy is self-sufficient, pretty much. So QE will end in the first half of 2022. So more positivity with um, attention already switching to rate hikes. We expect a minimum of two next year, in fact. But let's see what happens. So again, nothing but positivity around the dollar. Um, so really, when you're looking to trade, um, you know, it's really understanding the bigger picture and um, and looking for obviously pullbacks, right? Sometimes these pullbacks can take weeks. This pullback on the on the dollar index, and you wouldn't necessarily trade the dollar index, but you'd look for confluences on the dollar index. Um, you know, that pullback took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days, nearly two weeks to kind of pull back. And um, <clears throat> but it was worth it, right? Once prices did actually come right down into that zone, and then. If there was a buying opportunity or buying confluences, that's pretty much what you want to do. Um, from a sell trade perspective, we've got to look at both sides of the markets because, um, you know, got to be, um, it's not financial advice and I've got to obviously give you the uh, the other side of things. Um, there is still a supply zone uh, up at the highs around here. So if you do think that the dollar is expensive or something changes with regards to risk sentiment or the fundamentals, then um, this area here, I think just above that, you know, the 9450s to the 9470s, 74s will be um, a decent area to look for any kind of short trades. Moving on to the dollar yen and dollar yen again, 
uh, with prices kind of pulling back into this zone. I did say last week I didn't wasn't really feeling that um, area as a as, as a level to kind of get long, even though it's a nice demand zone. <clears throat> uh, for me, it was just because of expensive price, right? It's, it's more in a, of an expensive area. But if you did manage to get, you know, some pips out of that pull back into this zone last week, and again, um, uh, right there on the Thursday, then there was pretty much um, uh, some decent pips in there for a buy. So again, for me, I'm probably more looking at um, proof of value. So I want prices to kind of prove that there's uh, the dollar is, <clears throat> is is a buy and then maybe a pull back into a bit of a demand zone before uh, getting uh, long. But uh, anyone who did get long, I'm overall very uh, bullish on the dollar dollar yen I'm very bearish on the yen overall they are lagging way behind and uh, <clears throat> I do want to get in a, in a position on the yen um, and uh, if it's not against the uh, the dollar then it'll be against another stronger currency um, moving on to the actually matter of fact note before I do that there is a sell trade um, decent fr uh, fresh area of supply right at the 14 uh, uh, 1450s and uh, some profit taking potentially here but ultimately if the market is expecting rate hikes not saying that it won't reverse here it could do could pull back again nobody knows to this area it could even pull back all the way down here but ultimately when you zoom out I think the uh, the price prices should want want to go higher if the the data supports the narrative of a stronger dollar moving on to the dollar Swiss dollar Swiss um, again prices came down more into it did react off of this area on Monday there were some pips in there and then we've come down into a bit more fair value area and if you take fair value meaning that the low was the absolute bargain of the year so the start of the year in January 2021 this year it was at 0 0.87 cents and the high of the year was around was that uh, 0 0.94 uh, 7 cents then this is actually fair value right in between the expensive area and a cheap area is fair value yeah so that's cheap that's expensive fair value so pretty much pulled back and it kind of bounced off it you know um came down to just right near that uh, 91 round number and uh, started to um, move to the upside which i do think again the path of least resistance is to the upside the swiss national bank are lagging behind the uh the us dollar so potentially Again, I don't know, you know, this week whether prices will definitely go to the upside, but prob probab probabilistic, uh, the probabilities, I should say, um, of, of of prices going higher from here, I think are definitely worth, um, uh, or, on, or, on, or on my side anyway, because it's, it's not a financial advice. If prices, I think, come down to this 90 um, area, I think this is an absolute bargain, and I'll look into jumping on that um, any way I can. Um Again, depending on if the data supports the narrative. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD. Uh, dollar CAD, um, I think that again, you've got two kind of strong currencies. Um, so that's the reason why you really kind of got this, uh, this uh, I guess, uh, ranging market uh, state, um, you know, fair value um, uh, state where you've got basically buyers and sellers in agreement between the exchange rate of the dollar and the Canadian dollar I still think the path of least resistance is probably more to the downside and um, any pullbacks into that zone would be decent um, uh, uh, buys for the Canadian dollar although I think the dollar the US dollar is is is, is a buy against the Canadian dollar Canadian dollar I'm not so sure so we could see that happen if you do want to be a buyer with a dollar right now decent um, but I think there are definitely better trades uh, out there. Moving on to the pound dollar and the pound, um, my overall bias was short. I was saying this last week, I really want your prices to kind of come up a bit more. And it was also a, a level just above this uh, 138336 uh, I was talking about in the group and prices just didn't come up. Um, so I didn't really get a trade in on the short side. If you did manage to get short on this, brilliant well done to you uh, you should be in some decent profit i think that level of demand now is gone and uh, talking about fundamentalities uh, fundamentally on the uh, pound investors show fear of central bank errors in short-term bonds so uh, the bond traders are the smartest uh, people really in the market they are very sensitive to economic shifts 
um, and inflation and and, uh, and GDP. So the two year debt uh, takes a strain in sign. Investors think policymakers will end up reversing rate uh, rate rises, which is um, which is quite um, a shock. But um, you know the, uh, the the focal point of the global drop in government bond prices has shifted to short term debt as high inflation spooks investors who worry that a response from central banks could knock the economic recovery off course. So um, the, the 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 feeling is is that the central bank, although inflation is is going higher. A rate hike may um, uh, damage the economy that hasn't yet got going. So, ultimately, um, you know, there's there's problems there for the pound, and um, and so uh, I think any pullbacks, I think probably from now, uh, are going to be uh, decent uh, sell opportunities for me. Um, if we can get any uh, pullbacks, that see so a supply zone right there. So any really major pullbacks into this zone or even if if he comes even higher this week that would be fantastic as that would be a much better sell for me anyway up 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 at these uh, 139 areas just between that um I'd like for a short trade um again they the, the even though the banks monetary policy wise are doing uh great uh, as far as hiking rates I think uh the um the the economy for for the UK is struggling a bit especially in the third quarter so um there is such thing, I guess, as a um, as a negative uh, hike, right? As far as um, a negative effect of a hike. So um, let's see what happens there. But if you do want to get long on the pound at some point, then your first area to look for buying the pound would be at that one just below that one three six area on the uh, on the uh, uh, price chart demand zone. Uh, moving on to the uh, euro dollar. Euro dollar again. Prices came up pretty much touched this uh, the underside is the mark sorry supply zone a really nice supply zone that i was actually looking at because it had been touched here once twice three times and that was really the area to look for in fact i didn't get involved in this unfortunately um i was in um some other euro short trades um which actually worked at one worked out all right i actually say all right but one was a winning trade and one was a losing trade but um but the point being is that um the opportunity was there on the euro dollar um there were two opportunities matter of fact there was this one and there was also for the guys that were in the group uh, there was also a stop hunt trade as well um, so uh, there was definitely two setups in there which were def guaranteed to be profitable for anyone who took that and the reason why I say I mean I was in two because I don't really take more than two um, uh, 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 trades if I'm on, on one currency so if I'm in a euro um, Swiss and a euro uh, CAD trade I can't take a euro dollar trade right it's it's because it, I'm loading up too much on the uh, on the euro so I like to manage my risk just to explain really um, you know how I go about managing one of the ways I manage risk on um, on taking any trades so um, yeah really profitable trade anyone who got involved in that short and again I was saying last week you know the divergences between the um, you know the the, the dollar, uh, the US dollar, and the um, and the euro, and again that really is highlighted this week or last week I should say there was a meeting where Christine Lagarde came out. I had a few things to say. The ECB has finally woken up to in, to inflation reality. So ECB Christine Lagarde uh, just said it. The ECB discussed. Uh, only three things today inflation 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 so they still think the ECB um, ECB still thinks or sees the period of higher inflation as transitory or temporary but uh, has become much more balanced with its inflation analysis paving the way for further asset purchase reductions in December so although that might sound positive there was in fact um, something of interest which is the reason why the devil is in the detail you must read this stuff even if you don't understand all of it there's going to be something that you will understand and this is something that popped out at me so against all of the above which is basically all, all of this um, if you didn't understand that the synopsis is a first rate hike will not be on the cards before the second half of 2023 so they again they're lagging behind right we just saw an article where um, the Fed are looking to potentially um, high rates next year, right? Um, uh, so the, well, the ING are expecting a minimum of two next year, and the and Europe are literally lagging behind with a potential rate hike 
you know, in, in 2023. So ultimately, this is the reason why you're seeing, you know, prices continue to go to the downside. This is not Elliott Wave theory nonsense. This is, you know, fundamental analysis and understanding value and where monetary policies are diverging. So with that being said, pretty much we are where we are. If you do want to be a buyer uh, of the of the um, of the dollar, there is a I guess I guess technically you can draw a demand zone, sorry, a supply zone here. But I would say out of that supply zone, um, really the best area would be up within this uh, sixteen. I would say from the six from one sixteen seventies, that is going to be the area to look for a short trade. For me, I wouldn't look for any kind of short trades around there, not at all. Anything that aligns up with that 16, uh, 116, 65, or just above that is going to be, a for me, a sell. Um, and uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the euro because, you know, fortunes can reverse, you know, things have to pull back. There is such thing as profit taking, etc. And um, this is actually a really technically a, a very nice buy, I think. It's a very, very nice buy. But um, again, technicals uh, are not the reason why oh, alone anyway should be the reason why you should want to enter into a trade because if fundamentally um, everybody thinks that this is an absolute bargain this price for the uh, for the US dollar then the path of least resistance should be to the downside uh, moving on to the euro yen euro yen again bit of bit mixed picture both kind of weak currencies although i do favor the euro over the yen but uh, nothing really to write home about here i think uh, fundamentally they're like I said, they're pretty much both weak uh, no real demand here so i think if you are looking at getting short on the uh, on the euro dot, um, on the euro yen which is basically buying the yen wait for some sort of risk off sentiment as the yen does tend to strengthen it in a risk off environment but um i think uh, for now i think for any kind of buy trades on this currency pair um it's going to be a bit difficult um and this price has really come all the way down to this 129 area or they make higher highs higher lows and then prices come back down into that 132 um zone before uh looking to get long so nothing to really kind of uh write home about on that one aussie dollar and the aussie dollar strengthening Aussie dollar especially against the uh, US dollar has been a bit surprising but um, they the, the US the, sorry the Australian dollar did have um, some really good news regarding their uh, trade balance we were talking about it in the uh, in the room in the private mentoring group last week but ultimately I think that the um, with the, with the Federal Reserve looking to potentially uh, high rates sooner than the Australian dollar. This is basically just a pullback, I guess, if you're looking at, again, the yearly high uh, to the yearly low and where we are potentially, um, we are somewhere around fair value, right? That is fair value. So ultimately, if you do want to get short on this currency pair, um, now is a really good time to look for short trades. But again, is the Australian dollar the best currency to you know short against the US dollar? I would argue that there are much weaker currencies than the Australian dollar um, to look for trades against. But if you do, if that's the opportunity that you think that is uh, 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 you know the one, then that's a nice uh, selling opportunity or shorting opportunity um, and buying for the dollar. For the Australian dollar, technically we do have demand here, right there. So uh, any pullbacks into probably the lower end of this demand where you've got some confluence of a bit of support and resistance there, um, that should be uh, decent, right? It should be a uh, decent uh, buy right there. Um, moving on to finally gold and gold. Um, again, works really inversely to the US dollar. So if you believe the US dollar is going to get stronger, then you have to believe that gold potentially is going to get weaker. Yes, we have inflation problems. Um, but if the Federal Reserve are looking to high rates, money is probably going to uh, potentially um, you know, uh, move out of gold or some money will move out of gold um, uh, and into a higher yielding asset. But that's not to say that um, if inflation, if let's say, for example, if uh, the Federal Reserve looked to potentially hike rates to, to cap inflation, but, but they're hiking rates, but yet inflation is still rising, 
yeah, it's still going higher, then gold eventually will start to go higher because, you know, um, um, inflation starts to get out of hand, then gold is a hedge against that inflation. So um, again, a bit of a tough one to kind of trade gold at the moment. For me, gold generally should be overall in the long term uh, a buy but in the short term it's, it's, a, it's a more of a difficult trade to take but if you do want to be a buyer of gold then these are the areas to look for long trades if you're looking for again a short trade on gold and buying the us dollar then you're looking for really kind of there was an opportunity obviously here at this supply zone but if you you know waiting for price to go a bit higher then that's going to be the zone right there <clears throat> But um, but yeah, I think the, I think uh, gold may start to uh, fall a bit if the dollar does rise. There has been periods, of course, where the dollar has risen as well as gold, right? So not everything is always a hundred percent correlated. There are unique circumstances that do happen <clears throat> within the market, and you have to be aware of that. But um, typically. Um, fundamentally you know money tends to flow into one and out of the other so um, for me at the moment I think uh, potentially to the downside unless inflation does start to continue to rise and there are you know inflation worries anyways uh, that's it for this week I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis again don't forget to like subscribe and share press that like button um, and subscribe and I will see you next week hope you have a great trading week